Our second story uh, for this week's Rolling Stone takes us to Illinois. Uh, excuse me, it, it takes us to Iowa. For some reason, I'm getting Illinois and Iowa mixed up this week. Probably because the Iowa uh, Democratic presidential primaries are right around the bend. Okay, that's probably why I'm getting my I states mixed up. Pretty soon, I'm going to be mixing up Illinois and Idaho, and that's going to be... <laughs> That's going to be something to see. But this story comes to us from Iowa. I'm just going to read you the headline, okay, from the Des Moines Register. Convicted of sex crimes as a man, felon no longer deemed threat because of gender change. Oh, yeah. You heard me right, okay? Uh, 23-year-old Joseph Matthew Smith was convicted in 2015 of sexually uh, molesting 15 people, okay? He had, he had sexually molested this Joseph Matthew Smith, was convicted in 2015 of sexually molesting 15 people, boys and girls, okay, who were, um, you know, all sorts of ages, Okay, they were they were children. They they ranged from ages from one to thirteen. Okay, this Joseph Matthew Smith sexually molested as many as fifteen victims between the ages of one and thirteen. Okay, this guy is what he did was monstrous. There's no other word for it. Now it's true, you know, um, a report was released saying, uh, quote, Mr. Smith has not had an intimate relationship. His sexual encounters appear to have primarily involved molestation, including his own molestation by multiple perpetrators or his victimization of others, unquote. And the report goes on to say that he was um, repeatedly molested himself as a child in Louisiana, starting when he was seven. Okay, so it's this cycle of abuse that continues, continues, continues. He was abused. So he abused kids, and we can only pray to God that none of them grow up to continue this cycle. But, as the headline said, okay, he will, he, he's no longer been deemed a threat by the state of Illinois because now he is a woman, okay? The Des Moines Register um, reports that... Uh, in 2017, okay, he started transitioning uh, to a woman, quote unquote, right? <laughs> he, um, oh, I feel like deja vu. Okay, it says here that um, he first expressed a desire to get started on transgender classification in October 2017 and started using female pronouns. That's right, because now Joseph Matthew Smith no longer exists. Now it's Josie. That is his new identity. His The identity of Josie is who he claims to be now, okay? And he also started um, estrogen. He started hormone therapy, okay? And this is how he's getting out. This is how he's uh, uh, getting out here. Okay, because according to the Des Moines Register, it said that, um, quote, the report found the likelihood of reoffending within five years of release exceeded 20% because victims were of both genders and because Smith was under age 25 and never had a long term relationship. Dr. Tracy Thomas, a, for, uh, a forensic psychologist and former clinical director, of uh, CCUSO said the statute that outlines civil commitment requires the state to essentially prove an offender has a chance offending greater than 51% for the rest of his life. That becomes harder to prove when an offender significantly lowers his testosterone levels, which has a significantly higher impact on sex drive than estrogen. So basically because this guy has been uh, pumping himself full of estrogen and has synthetically lowered his testosterone levels the state has basically said that there that the risk of him being of, a, of molesting other people is so small that he can be uh let out 
to society again. Now, uh, people have tried to soften the blow, as it were, okay? Because, um, let me see here, let me see here. The Attorney General of Iowa, his um, um, spokesperson, okay? A woman by the name of Hicks, okay? Uh, said that people should not overreact to this you know, news that this guy, this serial molester is being let out of jail early, okay? Smith will be subject to sex offender registration requirements for the rest of his life, Hicks said, which includes regular meetings with a probation officer and a listing on an attorney general clearinghouse. Okay, so that's how they're trying to soften the blow. Uh, color me suspicious if this does not make me feel comfortable. And I would blame no one, no parent in Iowa who was saying, what the hell, Iowa, simply because someone th synthetically lowered his testosterone levels, you know, that is a guarantee now that they're not going to molest other people. We're talking about molesting a one-year-old, people. A one-year-old, a one-year-old, ages ranging from one to 13, okay? But because now he, this guy has put himself into the intersectional you know, hierarchy, and because he has synthetically lowered his testosterone, all of a sudden, that is supposed to make everything hunky-dory. Now, all of a sudden, he can be let out. All of a sudden now, he can be let out. And why is that? Why is that? Because this guy was actually put um, into um, a correctional center, right? He was put into a correctional center. Uh, he was going to be confined... Um, he was going to be confined at the Cherokee Civil Commitment Unit for Sex Offenders, which is the CCUSO in Cherokee, Iowa, for an indefinite period, but it was premised upon Smith having the sex drive of a man. So again, what we have here is several things. So first of all, the state believing that a man can become a woman, okay? Which, again, physically, biologically, impossible. I mean, you can hurt your body, by, again, giving it either estrogen when it should have testosterone or testosterone when it should have estrogen. But you cannot become a woman. You cannot have a transubstantial moment by which a man becomes a woman or a woman becomes a man or one or the other of them becomes something else entirely. You can't have that. So once again, we have the state um, giving credence to this idea, to this example of superstitious magical thinking as I have explained in previous YouTube videos, okay? So there's that. But the real big point of this story, which is going to raise its head again, okay, is this little fact. According to the law and according to transgender ideology itself, okay, Joseph Matthew Smith no longer exists. Only Josie Smith exists. There is um, actual um, corroboration for this. I mean, there are other examples of this. When Bruce Jenner became Caitlyn, there was a story about how Bruce had told all his kids, all the Kardashian kids, that Bruce was going to disappear, going to leave forever because Bruce was no longer going to exist. Caitlyn was going to exist. And after he transitioned, you know, people asked about him and he said, well, you know, it, it was kind of hard giving up Bruce as if he himself was an alien stranger. As if he himself was an alien stranger. He, it was creepy reading the excerpts of these interviews, it really, really was. It was like this existential crisis almost that you yourself are a stranger to yourself. It's terrifying, okay? Um, there was another example. I forget the trans individual that he was talking to, but Piers Morgan, I remember. I think this was actually before he went back to Europe, but he got yelled at on his show because this trans woman 
was just yelling and screaming and saying, I've always been a woman. I've always been a woman. And all Piers had said was that, you know, you're a trans woman. You're a woman now. He accepted that. But at one point in time, you were not a woman. You were a man who transitioned to a woman. And this trans individual was just screaming at him saying, no, I have always been a woman. I have always been a woman. So at the one of the centers of the trans ideology is this idea that once you take on a new gender, once you take on a new identity, your old identity is scrubbed out, voided forever and ever. Bruce Jenner, you know, is dead. For all intents and purposes, never existed. Okay? Now, here's where it gets interesting, and here's my question, especially with this case with Joseph Matthew Smith in Iowa. When that happens, Okay, why does the criminal record of the past identity remain with the new identity, right? Um, the, I, the, like, like I said, the Iowa authorities are trying to soften the blow by saying, no, 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 you know, Josie Smith is going to have to register as a sex offender. She's going to have to do all these things. But did Josie Smith commit a crime? Right? That was Joseph Matthew Smith who molested those 15 children. Did Josie Smith uh, molest children? Well, according to the transgender ideology, I mean, with those examples from Pierce Morgan and uh, uh, Bruce Jenner, no. Josie Smith never committed a crime. Josie Smith never molested any kids. That was Joseph Matthew Smith. But Joseph Matthew Smith, he's dead. He's dead, like Skank says uh, in The Crow. You know what? Smith dead. So why should this criminal record of Joseph Matthew Smith be connected to Josie Smith? Why should it? Right? Is it legal? Is it just? Right? And then this is another question. Here's another question. Is this going to be seen as a golden ticket out of jail and and of getting your record scrubbed because remember according to the trans ideology again you can be a woman even if you never transition even if you never get hormone therapy even if you never um uh, uh have surgery you can still be a woman jessica yanovich uh um you know or Yavich over up in Canada. Remember the trans woman who still has a uh, fully functioning male uh, uh, genitals, uh, male privates, you know, and who sued a beauty parlor because they would not wax his balls, right? The idea that there can be uh, uh, female penises, right? Remember that? That this is all part of the transgender um, ideology. Which so you don't have to have surgery or hormone therapy, you know, to be a woman. So will criminals, will convicted criminals in jail now uh, identify, transition into women or into some other gender, and be able to get off scot free? This is a part of the transgender ideology that has never really been spoken of. It's one of those things that nobody wants to talk about, I don't think. I don't know if many people have even uh, contemplated it, but now that it's happening, very few people, mark my words, very few people are actually going to want to say this because the very idea that this could be abused is going to be tantamount, again, to ideological treason to the transgender agenda. Okay, But these are questions we honestly have to ask because then they also open up questions of justice, they open up questions for our legal system. They open up questions just of, you know, common public safety. Is a murderer or a serial rapist going to be able to be let out of jail? Will the law now release them? Because, you know, Michael Myers, the serial killer or the serial rapist, you know, all of a sudden identifies as Michaelina Myers, meaning that all the crimes that Mike Myers committed is gone now. I mean, th these are questions that people are going to have to ask and they better answer, ask them quickly because these people, um, these people are going, okay, to be exploiting this. The transgender ideology is going to be exploiting this and 
people um, who smell a profit for themselves, who see how they can advance themselves, they are going to be uh, using this as well. Mark my words. But that is story number two.